Hello, Deos family. I hope you are well. Thank you for tuning in today. We are so happy that you're here with us. We're going to be talking today about a very important topic regarding mental health. We are celebrating the month of May and advocating for mental health awareness. Let's worship, let's come together in the Word, and let's enjoy this time. So thank you for coming in. Silence, fear, oh Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 
things change No, I won't give up No, you never fail me No, not once Now I'm dancing on The rising sun To the hopeful future And things to come And when seasons change no, I won't give up No, you never fail me And I know now once with all my heart I love you, Lord You're my first love You're Give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only great are you Lord you give life Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing it out. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. 
is your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise to you only one more time. It's your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise is your breath in our love. So we pour out our praise. Great you are. And we come today in this moment of worship, in this moment of rallying who our Father is, who our Heavenly Father is, and we come before Him to worship Him. I want to thank you for coming in this morning, tuning in. We're Deus Church and we're happy that you're here with us today. But most importantly, I know that God brought you here for a reason. If you're watching right now, there's a reason why you're here. The Spirit of Heaven, the Spirit of God wants to connect in this moment, wants to speak something fresh and boldly into your life that I hope that with that worship, it's opened your heart right where you are in your household. Whether you're alone, whether you're with your best friend, whether you're with your family, are you believing in something bigger? Are you believing in something greater in your life? I sure hope so. Because you have a, you have a God, you have a Father so mighty, so amazing who loves you who is calling you to step into that God appointment that he's been planning before you were even into existence in this world. I want to talk to you today about a very important subject, a topic that I didn't want the month of May to pass without bringing forth into their church world into our walk with God and what we're doing here, the purpose, again, for doing what we do is to come and worship and honor a Heavenly Father and to learn from what His Word says on how to apply that into our day-to-day -day life. How many of you say amen? Right now, in this month of May, it is known for Mental Health Awareness Month. A lot of places are advocating for mental health all around us in different hospitals here in Tucson, Arizona, different clinics, advocating for the importance of mental health. But I feel like as a church, I believe that as believers of Christ, it is important to touch on these subjects because they go hand in hand with His Word. Did you know that one in four Americans according to the CDC, CDC, will experience mental health issues. One in five Americans live with mental illness here in this country. So maybe you've had a struggle in that area, you've had a problem in that, or maybe you know someone that is struggling with that right now. But I wanna tell you before we dig in there right now, that doesn't define you. That is not something that subjects you to doom. 
No, in, our, in the word that we're about to dig in, there are things we can do to battle that together because at the end of the day, we're doing this together. We're walking to, in this togetherness that God wants us to be in community. Mental illness refers to a wide range of mental health disorders. Maybe you've heard of some, schizophrenia, bipolarism, disorders of anxiety, eating disorders, addictive behaviors. At some point, maybe you've experienced some of this. We all get to experience certain degree to this, regardless of age, gender, regardless of how great your upbringing was, your education, it does not matter. We're all susceptible. Any one of us can develop mental illness. I think in every way, if you analyze things and traits about yourself, we all have a certain degree of it. Like, for example, with me, I'm, I'm OCD with several things in my life. One of them are my golf clubs. One of them are I like to keep them clean, but I also don't like it when someone touches them. I get, I don't know, I get goosebumps, I get weird, and I don't, I don't like it. And maybe you can share in that sentiment about something in your life that you're OCD about. But the key thing here as we talk about mental health and we talk about the thoughts in our day-to-day, it's important to alienate it with God's grace and his plan for my life and your life. A serious subject that is, that it requires our attention this morning, that we can reflect on it, that you can ask yourself, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Right here where you are, Romans 12. If you can accompany me to Romans 12, verse two through three, it says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning Paul speaks about. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Measuring by the faith God has given us. I think in times of need, in in times of desperation, in in times of uncertainty, like the ones we've been speaking about because of this season, there's a lot of things that are probably going on in your mind. What is going back into the workplace, how is that going to look like? How is uh, the new norms that are, you know, being established, how do we cope with them? How do we go about life? There's a lot of different decisions that we have to make. There's a lot of thoughts that go into our mind. We want to come together as a church today to see what the Word of God tells us and what God wants us to do. To start to renewing our minds, which by the way, It is a continuum thing. What does that mean? How we develop our mental strength is a continuum thing. It means on any given day, on every day. You might fall into a different spot on the continuum depending on what's going on in your life. But like I said, everyone experiences mental health to some degree. But the start to renewing our minds is grasping the concept that that God wants to transform us For the purpose of how he created us, transform us, how we go about our thinking. Our thinking is a very important thing that happens in our day to day. The next step for how to renew our minds is learning of God's will for our lives, which again we find in Romans that it's good, it's pleasing and perfect. I believe so boldly in the concept of empowerment because in medicine, You never saw real change in a patient. You never saw a real transformation in their care. If you didn't empower them to understand the truth 
behind the severity of what they were dealing with. Mental health is something very critical that we're all susceptible to. I repeat to you, it could happen to you. It could happen to me. Sometimes it could happen based on the situation that we're in. But the real empowerment and the change that we saw in patients in medicine happened when we were able to connect with them and empower them to do something about their situation, their blood pressure, their sugar levels, an, uh, an ailment that they were dealing with, empower them to go forth and look at the signals and the red flags our body gives us. In our walk with God, the same thing. We won't see the truth if we don't dive into the word of God and we are empowered by it. We won't see the truth behind his word if we don't dive deep into it. And can we not just empower ourselves, but empower those around us. Empower us, each other, to every day, to every day, do a rewiring, do a reset in your thoughts. Because the thoughts can do something crazy. And our Charles Spurgeon once said, the mind can descend far lower than the body, for in it there are bottomless pits. The flesh can bear only a certain number of wounds and no more, but the soul can bleed in 10,000 ways and die over and over again each hour. That is crazy and so true. What is being said here with that quote of Charles Spurgeon, who was this preacher who made his impact in the world of Christianity. But it's true. I think no better month than the month of May, right here, right now, church, where you are listening and tuning into this, that there's a lot we can do on a day-to-day -to, -day to strengthen our mental health. That when those thoughts come into our heads, we have the power that is given to us by the Holy Spirit, by God, to rebuke those negative thoughts. God didn't create you in a way for you to dive into your own logic, to dive into your problem and think about your problem and, and your mind will have a bottomless pit. But at the same thing in medicine, they, we all, we've always said this, that treatment at an early stage of it brings forth better results in our walk with God. It's important to identify all of these things so that we're prepared that if we can start to treat it, when those negative thoughts come into our heads, those thoughts that are not aligned with God's grace and His beauty and His wonder and who He is in your life, there is so much we can do right now. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. What are you thinking inside? What are you thinking inside every new day at the end of each day? What are you thinking about? And I'd like for you to ask yourselves to think about, to ask yourself, how are you feeling? Ask yourself, how are you feeling today? Dive deep into that. Because sometimes we forget to ask those around us. Maybe we do ask people around us how are they doing. But do you ever stop and ask yourself, how are you feeling? How are you doing? And in that moment that you may feel something that isn't aligned with who you are and what you were created to be, let me tell you something. We have this beautiful resource called the Word of God, called His presence, called coming into community with people that are on the same page with you, walking alongside with you with the, with the purpose of living a better life. You see, our actions are the result of what we think. What we're thinking can lead, does lead to our actions. In John 8, verse 32, Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is why we come to church. This is why you're tuning in. This is why we're standing here in this household rallying on the name above all names because he is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Can we do something today 
this mental health awareness, can we dig deeper in getting to know him more because he sets us free. You see, the Bible is filled with stories. It's filled with stories that describe God's nearness to us. Psalm 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. You see, your thoughts this morning, waking up, maybe you're going through a situation. Your thoughts right today, if they're not in tune with his word and his presence, They can lead you astray. They can lead you to be brokenhearted, crushed in the spirit. But church, family, friends, hearing this, being free doesn't happen from one day to the next. You must understand that the truth is what sets you free and you have to know what the truth is. The truth is in our creator who made you. So special. He loved every moment of designing you for a purpose so bigger than you can imagine. That I want to remind you today of that. I want to come into your household. God wants to speak boldly today as we continue through this weird season still of isolation and different opinions and divisions about sanctions being loved and what, being lifted up and whatnot. But you know what? I'm here to tell you today that there is something so important that we need to do each day. We need to make sure that we're mentally strong. We need to make sure that those thoughts that we have that aren't in alignment with what God created us to be doesn't lead us astray. You need to just start keep declaring his goodness. You need to start declaring that the Holy Spirit is there with you as you walk in this life. I want to leave you with a few things as we wrap in wrap with this message today. Things that all these places in the medical world here in the US are advocating for this mental health and mental strength. But I want to add to those things that everyone is sharing right now. Something so dear to me, something so dear to us as believers of the faith. Number one, implant the scripture into your heart. Implant it into your mind so that it stays in alignment with God is speaking. Maybe you've never picked up the Bible in your life. Maybe you know about it. Maybe you know about God. I want to challenge you today that the Bible is the most beautiful resource we have access to. It sets us free. Pick it up today. Just start reading. Open it up. Start reading. But before you start reading, ask God to speak to you, to speak into your life. That is one of the best decisions we can make. Number two, pause and breathe. Notice how you feel. Going back into that question, ask yourselves, how do you feel? It's okay for you to do that. It's okay if if you're struggling right now, if you're feeling lonely. It's okay to feel certain things, but don't let it turn into an action. There's so much we can do right now to stay sane, to stay focused on your life. There's still so much life ahead. Number three, take breaks from COVID-19 content and the news and all of the above regarding it. Take a break from it. Post COVID-19, whatever next situation, problem that you may arise in your life, don't focus so much on the problem, but focus on your DNA. Focus on your lineage that comes from our Heavenly Father, making made you and I with a divine purpose. Number four, make time to sleep and exercise. That's what's floating around in these different healthcare facilities. Make time to sleep and exercise. Rest is so important that you're allowing yourselves to find that time. Five, reach out and stay connected. 
Don't isolate yourself. Stay connected with people. Continue to reach out to people. That is the most essential thing that we need in this time to find community. The last one, six, is seek help if you're overwhelmed or unsafe. Mental health specialists call a therapist. You see, the world of, of therapy and, and psychology unfortunately has such a negative connotation. If you tell someone that, hey, maybe you should go talk to a therapist, it's almost like offensive, but it doesn't need to be. Every single one of us are susceptible for the enemy to come and creeping into our lives to destroy us. That is the truth. I'm not here to just speak on hope and the beauty of, of the gospel. Yes, that is the most important thing, but I'm here to tell you that every waking morning, we have decisions to make. Don't make those decisions based on your thoughts and your logic and your reasoning. Come to our Heavenly Father, our Creator, and speak to Him. Speak to Him. You know why I love the church, friends and family? I love the church so much because it is an avenue for us to find connection with people that are not perfect, with people that are in search for something new, for something fresh. We're all in the same boat. But how beautiful that also in, in mental health treatment, one of the things that's listed at the hospitals and on the websites, to seek a spiritual leader to seek spiritual counseling. Even they, the logic and the science world, acknowledge the power of our Father and His Word. It is there in those booklets and pamphlets. I love that. I love that so much because the church is an avenue, again, for that communication to exist. This is, topic is so important to me and one that I could speak about many, many times on. Because I had a friend once who took his life. I had a friend that I had no idea he, had, was, he was struggling with anxiety, with depression. I had no idea. Sometimes people build a, a wall indirectly or directly or subconsciously build something around them, and we really don't know what's going on. I want to ask you today with your family, with your loved ones, ask each other, how are they doing? How are you doing? Ask yourselves every morning. Because when I was sitting there in that funeral, and I was sitting there in that row, I remember thinking, what could I have done more of in his life? What if could I have asked him? What could I have done better? What could I have, if could I have asked him, hey, how are you? I'll never forget that feeling. And that next morning, I made a pact with God that I would be more attentive to the people around me, that I would be more caring to the people around me. You have that power and decision to make. If you're hearing this today, mental health is real. Mental strength is needed in your day-to-day -day in my life. If you're needing to speak to someone, if you're not yet comfortable opening up to someone you know, there's a hotline, 1-800-273-TALK. There's a hotline that you can speak to someone. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling like there is no end, there is no finish line to your need, to your moment, of insecurity to your moment of frustration. You see, God, with His grace, by grace that we live in that was deposited to us by our Lord and Savior, He left us with the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Counselor, to be with us in time of need, to help us. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us. And we see in Romans 8, Verse 27, he cries out for you and I when we can't even have the words to describe our suffering. 
Maybe you have a person in your life that is dealing with a mental health issue. Can you reach out to them? Can you remind them of this grace that was deposited in our lives? Can we come to our Father boldly and surrender to Him and ask Him that any thought that comes into our minds, any thought that is negative, any thought that is not aligned with His goodness, that is not aligned with the character of God, may He empower you to be bold to rebuke those thoughts that don't belong in your mind. You have a beautiful life ahead still. You have so many things to accomplish still. I'm speaking to you, church. I'm speaking to you where you're sitting. The people around you right now, they have dreams. They have big goals. But we're never going to change the world if we don't empower each other, if we don't really step up to people and say, I believe in you. You have a creator, a father who loves you, who made you in his image. He has the best for you, still yet ahead. How beautiful would our day-to-day be if we had the courage and the boldness to speak truth? Can we start doing that? Maybe you've never accepted grace in your life. Before we conclude, I'm going to say a prayer. An invitation, if you will. To step into a relationship with God, whether you're seeing this live or see this video later on. You don't want to come into a moment where maybe it was too late with someone around you, with a loved one, that you could have done so much more. But by His grace, and stepping into a relationship with God. He awakens everything in our bodies, in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirits to be in alignment with Him. If you've never prayed this prayer, an invitation to bring Him into your life, I want you to join me. If you've done this prayer already, Years ago, a month ago, do it again. Join me. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you that we're reminded of the importance in your word on how we think. That it may be aligned with who you are, with your goodness. That we may stay on that beautiful platform of grace, Father, that we are so unworthy of, but through you. You make it all new. Through you, Father, you take away our emptiness, our void, and you replenish us. Father, I invite you in this new week, in this new Sunday, to come into my life, to come into my family's life, my best friend's life. Speak to me, and you're welcome here, Father. You're welcome into this space, into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I step boldly in my life, living according to your will, not my reasoning, not my logic, but your will, Father. For every day I have left, for everything I have left in my life, you, you are the author of it, Father. And we thank you. And we thank you for your grace, for your mercy, your compassion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. I'd like to bless you and honor you if you prayed that for the very first time. Congratulations. We've just made a rewiring, a reconnection with our Heavenly Father who is there for you, right there where you are. He loves you. Right there where you are, He wants you to be strong mentally. He wants you to be rewired and to know God's will that is good, it is pleasing and perfect. We're Deus Church, Tucson, Arizona. We'd like for you to please stay connected. we love to pray for you. We're on deuschurch.com. We're on Instagram, on Facebook. 
We're a praying church. We're a believing church that puts Jesus at the forefront of everything we do. So thank you for tuning in today. Please stay connected. We want to keep praying for you. Send us a message, and we're going to find a way to connect during this season where God continues to prepare us for the next one. Amen? May you stay blessed this new week, stay empowered, and we love you. Blessings, church.